And no, no, girls, this is a down shift because you gotta go that way. And Lenny, you're trying to be smart, go that way. You gotta go up this staircase. Throw it, that is the down staircase. Throw it. Let's do this, this is the up the down staircase. Attention, please. This is your principal, Dr. Maxwell Clark. I wish to take this opportunity on the first morning of the first day of school to extend a warm welcome to all faculty and staff, and a sincere hope that you have returned from a healthful and fruitful summer vacation with renewed vim and vigor, ready to gird your loins and tackle the many important and vital tasks that lie ahead undaunted. Thank you for your help and cooperation in the past and future. The same message every September. Andy Schachter, I have room 508. Sylvia Barrett, first time for me. Our Dr. Clark always gives us his pearls and pears, aims and goals, guide and inspire, help and encourage, new horizons and broader vistas. I'm about to teach my first class. First ever? You're prepared? I thought I might begin with first impressions. Importance of appearance, manners, speech, on which I'll build a case for good diction, <laughs> correct usage, fluent self-expression. From there, it's just You're a You're sure you've come to the right school. Calvin Coolidge, room 304. And I said prepared. I majored in Middle English Literature. Two courses in the philosophy of education. My master's thesis was on Chaucer. Well, good luck, Sylvia. If you need help, just holler. I'm right over there. Thanks, but I better you study karate. <laughs> Please print in your last name, first, 
your parents' names, your date of birth, and the same upside down. Then I'll make an awkward sequence. Any questions? An ink or pencil? Uh, I've got no ink. Can I use a pencil? Do you have a pencil I can borrow? I don't remember where I was born. Don't oh, mind me. I don't live no place. Uh, any place. Teach, there's two of them on my seat. First name, last, last name first. I got it, I got it. I'll my rights. This is your mom, see Is it? What's your trouble? There's broken glass back here from the window. Don't touch the broken window. It should be reported to the custodian. Does anyone? Me? I'll go. That's Mr. Garrison. He's down in the basement. Tell him it's urgent. You better go to the nurse and ask her for the 
accident report blanks. Hi. Okay, so you need to announce this to your class. It's from the library. Library. <laughs> the school library is your library. All students are encouraged to use it at all times. However, the library will be closed until further notice to enable teachers to use it as a workroom for their PRC entries. We'll get back to attendance. We won't get back to attendance. There's a new change in the assembly schedules. Your class will go to different rows, X2 schedule rows. I see. And this is urgent from Mr. McKee. To all teachers, a blue Pontiac parked in front of the school has been turned over. Is the following license yours? Tell Mr. McCabe I don't drive. Please send all new pupils to me for in-depth coverage. However, 
Seven disruptive elements to Mr. McCabe. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McCabe again, administrative assistant. He's very strict. I don't know, maybe he has to be, but try to avoid him. He's in charge of discipline and supplies. He can't bear to part with a rubber band. Ask him for a pencil and he'll turn white. <laughs> to all faculty, diligence, promptness, and accuracy are essential in all activities. Teachers with extra time will report to the office to assist with activities which demand attention. Regarding the requisition of supplies, please anticipate your needs. Do not make excessive demands. Any teachers wishing decorative posters, we do have a few left. Blue on white knowledge power, and yellow on green truth is beauty. Also brown and tan of Swiss Alps, slightly torn, but still usable. Students delinquent in obtaining athletic suits are to be alphabetized and reported. Girls who wish to be excused from gym are to be sent to me with all pertinent data. And Frances Egan, the school nurse. Please discourage excessive dieting in your homeroom. No books are to be removed from the library until the card catalog is brought up to date. The librarian, Charlotte Wolf. Do not encourage students to purchase paperback editions of Shakespeare and other authors. Due to outside pressures, we do not want to encourage them to a sufficiently edited or unexpected text. Samantha Bester, chairman of the English department, a brilliant teacher, so naturally she's promoted straight out of the classroom. Teachers should function according to instructions. This means hand in on time. Sadie Finch, our school clerk. Pupils are to report to the homeroom at 2.56 for checkup. Dismissal is at 3.05 sharp. This powers and And what about Paul Berenger? Ah, the glamour boy of the English department. Unpublished writer. Such men are dangerous and will woo you with its rhymes. You're on your own with that one. I see. Send legitimate lateness to the lateness coordinator. Those who are suspect or invalid send offenders to me. Read to your students a list of penalties and infractions to instill in them a sense of civic responsibility. Post in a prominent place in homeroom. Those who are late may fail to graduate. Have to leave you now. I'm trying to salvage a potential dropout. The first girl I called on was dropping out. Uh, uh, Arbuski Helen. I've got to work. I'm of age, and my income's needed at home. But we should talk about this before. Why talk? Most schools waste anyhow. Every period, another subject: algebra, Eagle, French, English. One after the other. What good is it? If you give me a chance to, it's all a jumble. And in every class, the teacher tells you something different. You don't know who to believe. Helen, before before you decide to quit, we should save your brain. I'm better off that way. Miss Barrett? Uh, yes? It has come to my attention that you neglected to fill out form B-22, accident report of a fall from a chair incurred by a student in your official class. Such negligence may result in serious consequences. But he wasn't hurt. Mr. Pickett, my real concern Before is leaving the building today, please fill out form B-22 in Sherman. Yes, Mr. Pickett. Thank you. Hey, you then. Just a minute! You'll have to do better, Miss Barrett. Admiring your penmanship. It, suddenly my name looks unfamiliar to me. I have a strange feeling I didn't even spell it right. For the school teacher who has everything. A board race. Thank you. McCabe wasn't around, so I took two. <laughs> You'll have to do better, Miss Barrett. So keep your... I have a free books on the sign here. I'll be having coffee in the teacher's lounge. Maybe I'll... If I can get through the locker assignments... Then I'll see. Miss Barrett? Uh, yes? Was Froney in your homeroom this morning? Did he stay till the bell? He was a little late, but he stayed till the bell. Are you certain? It's important. A valuable wallet was stolen from the locker room, and it was noted that Ferroni was seen loitering on that vicinity just before the bell. Well, it couldn't have been Joe. He was in homeroom. 
I see. Was he any trouble? Trouble? Rude, disruptive, any trouble? No, no trouble. If you think it helps to cover for them, then you're very much mistaken. Unless there's something else, Mr. McCabe. I'm going for a cup of coffee. Better luck next time, McCabe. Mr. McCabe. Mr. Every year I do a lot like you. <laughs> Please ascertain the number of students who have not had a hot breakfast this morning. Now that winter is approaching, this is particularly important. Poor nutrition is frequently the cause of poor marks. I'm sure you are all prove worthy and deserving of our trust and expectations. Sign, Dr. Maxwell Clark, Principal. As a special service, your period has inaugurated the lost half off. First of the list, lost. Green plaid jacket, tour lining, broke suit, urgent need, blue mark. <laughs> Hollywood of Horoscope Stars Magazine. Reward, Alice Blake. <laughs> Lost or stole? The left lens for my eyeglasses between here in history. <laughs> Donnie Williams, Esquire. Now for found. No founds. Students, the clarion is the voice of your school. Please subscribe and solicit ads to keep it talking. It's hard to say. 
For one thing, he waits until the hall traffic subsides before leaving his room. I have the impression he does this to avoid being touched by the kids. And he seems just passing through here, marking time teaching until he can get published and leave. And do you the girls do this find this intriguing? A devastating. One of the girls in my class, Alice Blake, is almost lovesick over the man. What I really like about him, Miss Barrett, he never sits behind the desk. He lives against it, or he sits on top. And have you ever noticed, Alice, this subject is Homer's The Odyssey. I know, and their myths and their meanings. But what about his eyebrow? Have you noticed that one is raised higher than the other? Alice, <laughs> I'm looking forward to your paper. Yes, Miss Barrett. Well, have you? Have I what? Notice his eyebrow. The one that's higher than the. What possible difference does? I can't continue now. I'll write later. I think it's Paul. I'll send the rest of this letter tomorrow. <laughs> What's the matter with Alice Blake? There's nothing the matter with Alice Blake. Don't bite my head off. Especially now. Because you're about to be immortalized. I found a rhyme for Sylvia Beckett. Nothing rhymes with Barrett. Fourteen carat. <laughs> Why did you insist on going home right after dinner last night? I thought we were having a pretty nice time. Uh, papers to mark. No one can take it that seriously. You were put off by my bad mood. It was the latest rejection slip. The tone is not only polite, but patronizing. Why don't I write of something familiar? Well? What do they want me to write about? Calvin Coolidge High School. At least they couldn't say you're not familiar with. Kids sprawling in classrooms, yawning in assemblies, pushing through walls. That's the surface, Paul. If you get closer. Do you get closer? I'm trying to, but I haven't even found what to call them yet. Teenagers, youngsters, young adults, kids. Those expressions all seem stilted, inappropriate, even offensive. Let it go and keep Sylvia, I've started on a new novel, and this one's going to make it. A big subject. A nuclear physicist is marooned on a peninsula in... Kamchatka. I looked up Kamchatka. It's at the far eastern end of Russia, opposite of Japan. Maybe he knows all about it, sister. I mean, maybe you can see how the tie via the Trans-Siberian Railroad. More likely the subway. <laughs> Are you reaching the students? No, but there was a beautiful moment yesterday. For the first time, I was able to excite a class with an idea. I put on the board, Browning's a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? And then we were involved. A spirited discussion, aspiration versus reality. Does, is reaching higher than one capacity wise? No. 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 Does it do one to failure? No, of course not. No. 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 And hope, what about hope? Miss Barrett? Yes? Can you keep your class in order? They're in order. We're in order. Then what's the meaning of this? Meaning of what? All this noise? The noise, Mr. Bidney? That's the sound of thinking. There'll be a series of three bells rung three times indicating shuffle. Loud discussions do not encourage the orderly evacuation of the class. I suppose he has his problems too. But keeping order is getting to be the important thing. Enthusiasm is frowned upon because it gets noisy. I don't know that I'm reaching them at all. Maybe other English teachers are more successful. Let it be a challenge. How do other teachers... Class, can you tell me what you've gotten out of English so far? Bring my many years of I'm well satisfied with my instruction and hope to achieve further progress in my chosen study with... Okay, Mary. Well, I got out of it was literature and inputs, but having boys in my class distracts me. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> I hope this is going to be good, because you keep me alive. Though it is too early to tell. You're eating your still milk. You should know. I made a bargain with all of my teachers. If they don't bother me, I don't bother them. <laughs> Donna? Donna Williams, Esquire. 
Esquire. All the teachers want me to become big. Frankly, I would have heard them freely tell me that I am no good English and never did they give me dirty looks at all. What I learned in English is to doodle. <laughs> English is such a boring subject, so I spend a lot of time doodling. Essays are a lot of pass. I've been held as for the birds. And George Eliot stinks, even though he's a lady. <laughs> a kaleidoscope. A crazy quote. You never should think you can. Shapes that come and go and you go up the line. Such is my remembrance of lost and vanished hours of English from once I arise. All creative and stifled. Yet a phoenix. Sorry about that. Let me ask a specific question. Why do we study myths? The Odyssey? Because we want to talk like cool people at a party. How would you like it if somebody makes you a great, great god and you didn't know him? You'd be embarrassed. What good is integration if I still get hard assignments? We study myths to learn what it was like in the old age with all the killings. If it wasn't for myths, where would Shakespeare be today? We study myths. Because they're about love. To me, the Odyssey is another Ethan throne in Slab Mary. Who wants to hear about someone else's troubles? Everybody has to read them, it's our turn. Myths help us gain tolerance for others, even when they don't deserve it. We read it because it's classical. In my opinion, the Odyssey stinks. Homer is a lousy writer. <laughs> Why do you ask these questions? What are you trying to prove? No one in the school cares about us, and it's the same at home and the streets outside. You probably don't care for my attitude, so, so thus give me a zero in vocabulary. Anyhow, I'm quitting the end of this term. Joining the dogs, eating the dogs, in this Pfizer world you're educating us for. But don't worry, you'll find plenty of women to play your ba ba little lambs and step and get your nice clean diplomas served on dirt. Yummy. I trust this answer to your question. You express yourself vividly, Joe, and your metaphors from dogs to limbs are apt. I'd give you higher grades than you give yourself. Joe, before you decide to quit, we should talk. Meet me after school. There's so much I, I wish I could convey what I... I don't understand them with big words. And you will have to pr prove yourself. And I'm busy after school every day. <laughs> we have a test today, so hurry along and finish your homework. Homework? Hey! Somebody stole my homework! <laughs> it's like this. I fell asleep on the subway because I stay up all night with my homework. So when I stop at my station, I ripped the door not to be late and left my homework on the subway. As I was taking down my assignment, my bed style. I had to study French, so I didn't have any time for English. My brother took my kids to work. Um, the papers to see for my book. If the teacher wants to know something, why didn't she look it up herself instead of making us see? <laughs> there is no rope since my uncle will be. I just sit in the hallway and I can't use a kitchen table. In those hours when I have to do homework, I can watch TV. The baby's still in the middle of the It's a terrible choice. My dog went. <laughs> Okay, Lenny. Um, I guess that makes it unanimous. Not quite unanimous. I thank you. Why is it Lenny's last speech? I learned your name, Carol. Couldn't you learn mine? We see each other every day. Do we have to be formal? It's protocol, dumb. Right, Miss Barrett?
Please don't open your test booklets until I tell you. I don't care if I never will. Whatever you say, Gigi. May I please have a pencil, Miss Barrett?
Please continue with your work. You too, Charles. I'm not cheating, I'm one handed. Since five minutes ago? <laughs> hey, I'll do right now. Whatever you say, teach. I shouldn't have let him go. Probably not. I can't take this system so seriously. Did you get these absurdities? Lateness due to absence, high underachiever, polio consent slips? <laughs> I can match yours any day. Please disregard the following. All teachers, send those students who have failed to report to check out to Mr. McCabe as they have left the building. How do we send students who have left the building? It'll be a challenge. What's a challenge is that it's raining on our stage. <laughs> library lessons on mythology. Your students create havoc. They have no respect for the printed page. Two of them took out books indiscriminately. What better way to respect the book? Not only did they misplace the Golden Age of Greece, they also put Bullfinch on the zoology shelf. <laughs> Observing your classroom. I see. Oh, Mrs. Bester, there's only 11 copies of Romeo and Juliet in the book room. Use Ivanhoe. They have 160 items. I have some useful material for you, Miss Barrett. A few more personality profiles. Lou Martin exhibits inverted hostility and manic behavior patterns. Donna Williams must curb paranoia due to socioeconomic environmental factors. Uh, what am I to do with that information? My biggest concern is Joe Ferroni. A dangerous situation. Explosive. It's imperative to channel his libidino aggressive impulses into socially acceptable attitudes. Uh, how? What would you suggest? Diet. Nutrition. Make sure he has a hot breakfast. I'm not his mother. Stay out of this. He cuts classes, disrupts others. Every stairway is clearly marked an up stairway or a down stairway. He always goes opposite. You'll have to do something. Mrs. <coughs> Barrett? Uh, yes? How dare you? How dare I what? Let him out of the room unescorted. He had to go. Unescorted? There was no escort. You should have waited. The situation did not work waiting. His exam paper may be invalid. Why? He may have been looking up answers. He told me he wouldn't. He told you? Yes, he told me. And you believed him? I believed him. Go back to your seat, young man. <laughs> I believed him. Girl in front seat, eyes on your own paper. This is not the time nor place to explain to you the gravity of your position. You had explicit instructions and you disobeyed them. When Froney finishes, put his pet tape test paper to the side. He didn't cheat. They don't need your coddling, they need discipline. We need to punish them, punish them for every infraction. Because if we don't, they'll get it later on in life from a cop or a judge. Ever been in a ju juvenile court? Yes, we need their respect, but there's only one way. Strict enforcement. There's a high possibility your interim rating will end in on a satisfactory. See what they're doing, keep track of them. When the bell rings, uh, please bring up your newspaper. Mm -hmm. I'm here for Mr. Connection. I knew I left Thank you, Charles. I'm sure you did, Lou. Miss <laughs> Barrett, I mixed up my papers, but thanks for sticking up for me. For us. <coughs> it was a high test, Miss Barrett, but that's not your fault. 
satisfactory. Here's my Miss Mary. I have to mark them all. Such a long day for me to each. Talk night. I mean, Miss Mary. Everything's going to be fine, Miss Mary. Maybe Homer is such a long day. Don't like him, Miss Barrett. You may fool them, but you don't fool me. You're even phonier than the others, because you put on this act. We need to take You know how. Just who do you think you are? Anything else, Joe? Nothing. Nothing else. Too bad I can't believe you. That's all. It's from Sylvia. She says she's beginning to think she isn't communicating with anyone. You better communicate with Maddie. I mean, how are you going to answer her letter about the February vacancy of Willowdale? Tell me about Willowdale. It's a small suburban college. Maddie writes that they have trees in the windows and sit in leather chairs and sip coffee. Something's going on. Here, have you seen Mr. Berenger? 
Ian ran away. He was just here. Where did he go? I have no idea. If he comes back, tell him to call the office immediately. I don't expect you. I hold a license in the New York City Secondary Schools. And am at presently teaching at Calvin College High. Please send out the help phone for Alice Blake. It's urgent. Do you have any going accident reports? No. I'm all out. What happened? It's very urgent. All teachers and students remain in their class disregarding the bell until further notice. Lessons are to proceed as usual with no incidents to the room. Reference. Please discourage morbid curiosity. What incident? Such behavior is completely atypical for a girl with such a stable personality profile. There are factors beyond our control. Wait, what happened? The office needs you to fill out this emergency form right away. Alright, all you do is check one. Parent or guardian reached, not reached, by telephone, by telegraph, to opposite parent guardian of the villain Alice Blake, and then after we will to inform you. Villain, villain what? Don't you know? Is, is that the police or the calling the ambulance to take Alice Blake to the hospital? She fell out of the window. All teachers, I have noted and observed in assembly that a number of our students seem uncertain of the words of our alma mater song, The Purple and Gold. Teachers are advised to go over the wording with your students. Singing our alma mater was to write a proper feeling should foster and encourage a more appropriate school spirit in public image. The words of our first stanza are as follows. Ye loyal sons and daughters, whose hearts would never grow old, as long as ye are true to the purple and gold. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe that'll solve everything. If they're going to sing the alma mater, sing it correctly. Look at that. At what? Suggestion boxes. Miss Meredith don't suggestion boxes. She's asking for it. It's almost the end of the term. Why start innovations now? Because she can't wait. She's a masochist. That's a high school teacher who sets up a suggestion box. <laughs> Teachers are always telling what's wrong with us. What about the other way around? I wish they all had suggestion boxes. Boy, would I like to tell them off. But you're okay, Miss Barry, or a teacher. You said you gotta have courage mark and mark pictures and sign our name. But we don't have to, so I'm not. <laughs> not enough boys, too many girls, but that's not your fault. Also, some schools, they have dancing in the cafeteria. And they put on other things. Why not? You only live once. Linda Rosen. Abolish prejudice. <coughs> Abolish Ms. Greenberg's interviews. They make me sick. Like the other day when she asked me if I was ashamed of where I lived. Donna Williams, Esquire. The teachers are ruining America. This is the last time I'm writing. Signed the home. <laughs> you seem to be a very understandable person. By that I mean, you understand us by not being that old yourself. <laughs> Too bad you're a teacher. And pretty like my sister. I wish you were a plain person. Then we could be closer. Vivian Pay. The way you read is too emoting. And you have pets, like Joe Ferroni. He's your pet because you so much trouble. Sign, neglected. You're a good teacher, except for rock books you have to teach like the Odyssey. I would get to do doctoring. Sign, disgusting. Is it okay if I start collecting money from the homeroom kids to send flowers to Alice Blake in the hospital? The thing is, we always used to sit in front of each other. Carol Blanco. On Mondays, what do you think we are? Orders, signed Mark Anthony. <laughs> No matter how important the lesson, you we'll always make it interesting. I suggest you continue the good work. Harry A. Kagan. Clean up the slums before you go to Mars, and stop the bomb before time runs out. And as for schools, there couldn't be any without us. Or futures. Lou Martin. Please tell Lou Martin to quit showing off. He thinks he's so comic. Well, I don't. Signed, Serious Student. 
And don't worry, Miss Mary, we're behind you 65%. <laughs> Thank you for showing me that there's nothing more important than communication. But with so many other students, I feel we are both wasted. Elizabeth Ellis. I'm not a good penman, but I must tell someone. I mean, I'd like someone to know. So I'm putting this in the suggestion box for the record. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday. Signed, me. <coughs> you read something brilliant again? A parody of Ezra Pound, written in many cantos, which I plan to lay at the feet of our dedicated colleague. Is Sylvia back in school today? Yes. Where'd she go yesterday? I haven't spoken to her. I need it. How would you handle a love letter from a student? I have no idea. Is Sylvia back yet? I have a problem with Aunt Alice Blake, and she's still listed in Sylvia's official class. What's the problem? An overdue book. She used the library 49 cents. What book? The Ideals of the King, Alfred Lord Tennyson. You could always send a posse to the hospital. I feel like a fool, but this is a matter of record. Not for the first time. I have to warn her constantly about overdue books. Doesn't it get you a little excited that a student really cares to read? I used to get excited. But with no books, no help, and constant demands, all I care about now is for one shred of library to survive. And right now you need 49 cents? Right now I'm trying to keep up with rules that I didn't even make. But if paying 49 cents would make you feel better... I wish it were that easy. I remember your comments in the teacher's lunch. Getting involved does them no good. Solve kipute. Amused attachment. He said that's the only way to remain intact. I'm not sure it's possible to teach and also remain intact. Make up your mind. As Ella Friedberg would say, I have a problem. But you're working on it. All I really care about is maintaining my amused attachment. Come on, Paul. I have another penalty for you. Uh, Gray's energy. The school bell tolls the narrow starting day. Ah, do not ask for whom it tolls, I see. The students there once push their screaming way. I know at us it tolls the B and me. That's very clever. I have some others here, also very clever. When I didn't see you yesterday, I was afraid you'd left us. Glad you're back. I think he's a lot more upset than it shows. Maybe. I wasn't even able to see us. She's not having visitors, that's what I hear. Barrett? Why do you neglect the seven day attention for the day? Because Linda Rosen wore a pink sweater and a fuchsia stretch pants to school. <laughs> she was seen by Mr. McCabe, who had her cool her heels in the office. She was also seen by the boys in my homeroom, who migrated to her vicinity en masse. <laughs> I'll take attendance later, unless they follow her like lemmings into the sea and they're all drowned. <laughs> all in for Mr. Craig. She had only one comment about Alice's accident. Handed, before three, Alice's uh, locker number and book receipt. McCabe tells us to keep our public image intact, and Dr. Clark urges us to keep our, be aware of our responsibilities in a democracy. Well, what else can they say? I don't know. Some indication they care about the girl. Are we supposed to be involved? There was nothing any of us could have done for Alice. She was having a very rough time outside. How do you know? Once, she came to me beaten black and blue. Beaten? What did you do? Gave her a cup of tea. Tea. Why tea? What else could I do? I know more than anyone here about what goes on outside. Poverty, disease, malnutrition. Yet I'm not supposed to give them even a band-aid. But that isn't it? I used to tweet, bang on my desk, to talk myself worse, arguing with kids, parents, welfare administration, social agencies. Nobody even heard me. But you're a nurse. Have you read the directive posted on my wall? The school nurse may not touch wounds, give medication, remove warm particles from eye, and so on, and so on. I didn't realize... So I had a cup of tea, send her out notes. Poor nutrition is frequently the cause of poor hearts. 
I don't know if anyone pays the slightest attention, but that's what I can do. That's it for me. None of us is God. Nothing is our fault except perhaps poor teaching. But are we teaching? Is anything getting through, or are we just talking to ourselves? You were missed yesterday. I had to go in and rescue your substitute. Your kids were turning her into a nervous wreck. Oh, why would they do that? It's got in loyalty. To me, you wouldn't believe the lesson anyway. She was having them turn great poems into newspaper headlines. Such as Midnight Rider warns a foe, seeming guilty of shooting bird. A uh, wife tells all in Portuguese love letters? Not bad. Man reports talking raven. Maybe I should stay away. Where were you? I'm, let's just say I have a feeling that my interim rating will be big fat you. No one is rated unsatisfactory unless certified by me. Let's not tell the truth, Ms. Shackman. Regarding the requisition, we are all out of erasers, all out of red pencils. Our order for window pulls was sent to the board last spring. We must be patient. One thing more, a frivolous attitude and levity towards attendance taking are unsuitable to the high seriousness of our profession. I'll try to cut down on the levity, Mr. McGabe. Have you had a chance to look over Joe Ferney's examination paper? I did, so did Mrs. Besser. I've been waiting to hear. I, I dare say, so is Joe Ferroni. His mark was 86. Any evidence of cheating? You'd have heard. No evidence of cheating? That's right. Shouldn't something be said? If not to me, at least to Joe Ferroni. Why? I'm hoping he'll stay in school. To what purpose? No one likes to feel unsatisfactory. If you're concerned about getting a U... I'm concerned about so many things, Mr. McCabe. We'll always have more than we can handle. We must be realistic. You weren't here yesterday. I was in an interview at Willowdale Academy for a possible February job. Oh, I see. I was being realistic. Yes. Yes, of course. You've upset him. McCabe? He's upset. <laughs> Not McCabe. Never. Sylvia, I don't find him inspirational either, but remember, his pupil load is 3,000. Willowdale is such a different world. You mean nobody shouts I teach? I mean, I'd only have three classes, three days a week, the other two days for conferences. I might even hold a seminar in Chaucer. If that's what you want. I want to practice my profession, that's all. I want to be like, like Chaucer's clerk of Oxford. Gladly would learn and gladly teach. Why do you think your students picked on the substitute yesterday? Ask McCabe. Ask yourself. I have to get back. Did anything else happen while I was gone? Life was happening. <coughs> Don't worry, Miss Barrett. We're behind you 85%. <laughs> My mother has been living with me for 16 years, but she still insists on cross-examining. Please talk to her. Signed, Linda. I know school's going to help me out with life, but so far it hasn't. Signed, Rusty. Tell us more about your own life. It makes you feel very human. I'm only miserable at home and never in English. That's why I have this ambition to be an English teacher. Your friend, Vivian. Teachers give tests for spite to get even. <laughs> Send me to sign our name. Signed, Anonymous. Will you call me to answer? Don't call me when I don't know the answer. It makes me look dumb. You always call one of the other students when they know the answer. Sign, Donna Williams, Esquire. You have one of the best sense of humor I've ever met. You make the lessons laugh. Carol. Thank you for showing me that writing clearly means thinking clearly. Elizabeth. Will you marry me? <laughs> this is absolutely Last time I'm writing. <laughs> I enjoy the way your tone of voice makes poetry sound and change it to sadness or happiness, depending on the poem. I went to the school library to look for more Robert Frost, but it was close. Charles. You never call on me, and if you do, it's very seldom. Jill. I wish to commend you for taking an interest in mine and the class as a whole. Grammar Harry A. Kagan. Cafeteria lunches are lousy. Your enemy. <laughs> I'm nobody special, so nobody knows me. But maybe if I drop out and get a job, 
No, I'll just be somebody with the job. You give me one good reason why I should stay in school. I'm Joe Peroni. I could give you many good reasons. You think we're gonna cave this is out? It's time we talk this out, Joe. Stay after school. There, I, I wish I could... What's in it for you? I'm beginning to wonder. Let's just say it's my job. If I didn't know better, you wouldn't even convince me. Save it for the sheep. Miss Barrett? Paul? I'm slipping this into your suggestion box as the most likely place to catch your attention. And you have it. There's a rumor you're leaving at the end of the term. Why on earth would Let's you... just say I couldn't find the proper response to high teach. I wish you'd reconsider. Why? Because if you leave, where else would I get such ghastly honest literary criticism? Are you sure you want criticism? No, but just the same. You're needed here. You're our spokesman, catalyst, infighter. Besides, you laugh good, like an English teacher should. I'm not saying this to get higher marks. Signed, Paul. Paul invited me to an end of the term party, but I just couldn't go. I mean, how could I celebrate with a man who corrects a love letter? You're leaving for Willowdale anyway, <coughs> so what's the difference? The term ends this week. I want, there's so much more I wanted to do. Such as have a little talk with the brony boy and turn him into a model student? It's not a question of a model student. I wouldn't want him to be that. I suppose Harry Kagan's a model student. He's also a stuff shirt. <laughs> There's so much more to throw, but I can't seem to make a difference to him. And that might be the one and only compensation to make a permanent difference in the life of a child. In your first letter, you quoted a kid who said she's better off out. As far as that school's concerned, maybe you're better off out. So I'll write as soon as I can. Don't forget. Yes, Mrs. Buster. I have some un unofficial comments on your teaching, not those that will appear on my formal observation report. I see. The lesson I observed was certainly an interesting one. Is there a reason why you chose Robert Frost or Road Not Taken? I wanted to lead them into a discussion of blazing a trail versus conformity, and to the regret inherent in any decision. Certainly a pros. Uh, Mrs. Buster? My comments follow. Ask your question first, then call on a student writing. Thus engages the whole class in thinking. Try to avoid asking vague or loaded questions as, how do we feel about this poem? They do we regret what we haven't done? The teacher obviously expects a yes. I see. The boy next to me was doing his math. A teacher should walk about the room. Immediate correction of English was needed, but he missed. He should have been on the road, on this here road, but he couldn't make up his mind. Couldn't. I like how you handled the hostile boy, the one with the toothpick in his mouth. You made him feel as the whole class missed his contribution. But you should have made him remove his toothpick. I've been fighting a losing battle with that toothpick. Well, win it. And don't let a few of the students were not blessed the discussion. Call them the non-volunteers. I'm not sure you're putting your energy where it's best needed. A uh, Mrs. Buster? The cream will probably rise at the top anyway, where our help is most needed. Miss Barrett is with the skin milk. Thank you for your comments. The lesson I observed was certainly a fruitful discussion of choices, but what concerns me is your choice. But I see you have a class now. My formal observation will follow. Before we get to the test, I have a piece of creative writing. <laughs> Selfie, among the dirty dishes, crusted with grease, bearing food to a secret 
sons behind the dream boards. How fearful were his eyes. Shall I kill him? Miss Barrett, is it clear that I'm writing about a cockroach? <laughs> <laughs> Crystal, but the subject is Macbeth. You, sir, I'd like to hear from some others. Oh, Carrie, I've been waiting to hear from you all term. What's your question? Have you considered wearing contacts? Oh, you should totally consider them. The subject is Macbeth. <laughs> Have you read the scene for today? Not all the way, but we already know who did it. Let's start at the beginning. Any volunteers? The way I see it. Uh, well, not... <laughs> Charles? The title is called Macbeth. The title is Macbeth. Didn't you read it last term in English? I mean, never read it before. I've never read it before. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> in this book, the author depicts. Depicts. This word. We're talking about the thief, not the plot. What's the difference? Um, Linda? The plot is what they do, the theme is how. Not quite. Vivian? The theme is what's behind it. Behind what? The plot. Mrs. Macbeth nudges them. You mean nudges? Nudges. Being a female, she spurns them on. <laughs> Donna? Donna Williams, Esquire. Esquire? The theme is he kills him for his own good. Uh, Jose? Me? Yes, you. I didn't have my hand raised. But I'm calling on you. Why me, Miss Barrett? Jose, did you read it? Yes, but... We, what do you think the theme is? I didn't volunteer if my hand wasn't raised. But we like your opinion. <clears throat> yes, me. Not this time, Harry. If you want the theme, well, I'm uh, I've asked Jose. Jose, what do you think? The author tries to say... He tries to he succeed? He tries to show... He shows... You mustn't be... be ambitious. Does he say ambition is bad? Yes, very bad. Jose, isn't it good to be ambitious? Yes, but not too... Not too what? Too ambitious is not such a good thing. So, excessive ambition. Yes, can lead to big trouble. That's the thing. Yes, you're right. I was right? Yes, you're right. I figured out the theme, right? I'll have to call on you more often. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Sylvia, are you all right? 
I remember the first time I was able to excite a class with my, an idea. I put on the board, a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's the heaven for? It made me feel special. Are you reaching for something? I'm falling flat on my face. What's happened? How do you stand up? Are you serious? Yes. Walk through the halls, listen at the classroom doors. In one, a lesson on the nature of Greek tragedy. In another, a drill on who and whom. In another, a hum of voices intoning French conjugations. In another, silence, a math quiz. Yes, but... Whatever the waste, stupidity, ineptitude, whatever problems and frustrations, something exciting is going on. In each of the classrooms, all at the same time, education is going on. Young people exposed to education. That's how I manage to stand up. B, am I a dropout? Don't be silly. You do what you feel is best. For the first time, I'm seeing myself in others' eyes. Whose eyes? For one, Joe Ferroni's. Get past the words, Sylvia. Get to what they're really saying. I have to go now. Another salvage problem. Get to what they're really saying. I don't know if you've noticed this, Barrett, but I've decided to just more conservative. And since coming to you, I only wear eyelashes on a date. <laughs> My father says, when I turn 17, why should he feed an extra mouth? That's me. What I'm saying, Miss Barrett, is I can I hope I can come back next year. better off with more teachers like you that actually take an interest instead of just teaching because of, you know, because they have to. But I will never forget you as long as I live. You made me feel I'm real. I used to sign me, but not anymore. Sign Jose Rodriguez. If 
I mispronounce any of the new names, please correct me. Our boozy Helen? Oh no, that's wrong. She dropped out last term. I was just wondering if you wanted some posters, uh, blue on white knowledge of power, and yellow and green chips beauty. Yes, I'd love some posters. Oh, I'll leave these here. If you please continue on with your tickets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Axel Rod Leon? Him? He's always asking. Oh, you're lucky he's not here. Lucky, give you trouble. Aaron's Charles? Belgado Ramos? <laughs> 